Welcome to World of Horror. I wasn't sure I was going to do another one of these playthroughs, but I've definitely accrued enough new stuff to talk about to justify going through it again. And for the occasion, I've broken out my favorite color palette, Jaguar, which is based off of the MS-DOS style. Pink, blue, and white. Excellent color scheme. Now, I have nine achievements remaining before I have completed the game up to its current patch. Those achievements are four more backstories that I had to complete the game with. The uh, content update added a series of backstories that have to be unlocked sequentially. So I need to play through the game four more times to get all those if I succeed in each of those playthroughs. I also have to do four challenges from challenge mode, and I need to do one weird, very specific thing with a very specific character. So in this video I'm going to go for that one weird, obscure thing, but I'm going to take a huge risk and do it in challenge mode. The challenges are much more difficult versions of the main game. You can see there are seven planned, but two of them don't exist yet. And I've managed to complete one of them. Parole violation with my favorite character, Miku. And they set the difficulty for you, they set your character for you. They usually do not allow you to have a backstory. This one does have a backstory specifically, but the rest are all World of Horror, the default one, with no benefit or detriment. The old god is randomized, which can screw you over. But the game is random enough that that rarely makes a huge impact. And we can see that uh, we also have a special rule in each one. We will be playing through uh, the Morico Challenge. You're grounded for a week, young lady. Why won't you read some books for a change? We are grounded from the use of firearms. So instead, we start with an inspiring novel. It is a very unfortunate week to be banned from using guns, because it is the week that the old god has decided to invade Shiokawa. We need to fight it off and all of its minions with our bare hands. Very, very difficult, because all of Moriko's character-specific perks relate to using guns better. And we are set to hard difficulty. I haven't done a playthrough on hard difficulty on recording yet. So... This is a bit unlikely, and we have extra damage, both to and against us. Uh, to and by us? Prepositions are difficult. Anyway, that's our lot in life. In all previous playthroughs, I've gone directly to my home to begin with. This time instead, I'm going to check out the lighthouse. Normally, there's no reason to go here until you've completed all the mysteries. However... This time there is. See these symbols here by the door. These all have meaning. They're very important, and in an optimal playthrough of the game, you definitely want to check these before you do anything else. Because you can plan your build around what these mean. And, uh... The issue with that is, you have to know what they mean. I don't. But I know the fact that there are six of them has specific relevance. That has informed me of something future in this playthrough. And this one right here, this looks like a Polaroid, because that's exactly what it is. That is very important to me. So, I know something that I need to look for. Now, if we return to the lighthouse, I will point out more details about these. But if I die before I make it there, we, uh... We'll hopefully just remember to info dump about what all those symbols meant. But for now, I know one important thing. And I'm going to set my preferred level layout. Normally I would take the History Club, because it basically gives you a free level up at the cost of 10% Doom. This time, level ups are worthless. So instead we'll take the School Nurse has an outside possibility of treating minor injuries for free. Minor injuries are uncommon, but it's better than effectively nothing, which is what the History Club would get me this time. That seems like a good enough start. I do 
ultimately need five funds. That's a bad start, not getting anything in my cupboard. But yeah, we'll need five funds to work with for what I'm going for here. If we were on normal difficulty, we would have just gotten five funds, because we start with four, there's one more in the robot, we're all set. This time we're going to have to do some weird, uh, dangerous things, which might ruin the run right off the bat. We'll see. We have alternate costumes, nice fancy sweater with skulls on it, uh, tank top, nice warm jacket. We'll stick with the hunter sweater. It's her default costume. Good way to get to know her. It was actually necessary to unlocking the character in the first place. Morico still has the most obscure unlock method of any character in the game. Even more so than Yashiro, and we saw that one on video. It was pretty, pretty obscure. So first thing that's gonna give us a whole lot of RNG, randomness that we have to deal with, is I need two specific mysteries to get what I'm going for. I kind of like that we have to re-roll all five, because if I got to specifically pick all five of them, I would agonize over that decision every single time, and waste probably even more time than I spend re-rolling. But because it is all random re-rolling, you might end up having to spend a lot of time on this. However, we got pretty lucky, I got the two that I want. I want Evolving Eels for Kana, of course, because this is going to be a hard enough playthrough anyway. And I got the god who gives me extra damage, so Kana's going to be necessary to mitigate that. And I want the Peculiar Painting, because of the weird specific thing that I have to do. So first, we'll get Kana, we'll get our five funds and the random stuff that we need to uh, spend those funds on. And to get those funds... We're going to the Witch Tree. According to legends, these trees' roots reach towards the grave of a lynched witch. Nailing a straw doll to this tree will grant you your wish for a price. We wish for money. And we got... We basically can't cast spells anymore. We don't have any spells. But spells might have been good later on. But we need two more. It only costs us some charisma, that's good. So we got our five funds and it barely ruined our run. Then we need to go to the hardware shop and hope that this doesn't take forever. We're gonna need two things from the hardware shop. We got neither of them to start with. Not a good start. We still got neither of them. Okay, there's one. Fuel. Another reason it's pointless to level up Moriko. Her starting stats are superb. Three sixes, two fours. I don't know what her luck is, but uh, even if it's disastrous, we're still, we're still doing pretty good. And this is the other item I wanted. Heavy duty flashlight. Because it's a knowledge weapon and she has very good knowledge. And it's a light source. We need a light source. So many things in this game require a light source. Now we have no funds, I would like to go buy an empty bottle from the dog. Maybe we'll stumble upon some funds later on. For now, we begin our investigation. So a charisma check, or a knowledge check, obviously. Go for the knowledge, fail anyway. And... hmm. Maybe I lost stamina to something else, because that took two stamina from me. Interesting. Anyway, I'm also going to investigate the seaside. That's for our side quest. Ooh, this fella. Um, I don't want to raise my doom anymore because I had sort of bad luck over at the the hardware store. So I will sell my reason for money. And I didn't have to deal with any seaside specific uh, events, which can be somewhat lucky now. Bottle of milk, perfect. Even an empty bottle would have been great. This is just slightly better. Now we just carry on the mystery as normal. Hopefully you're familiar with it, because I've been through this one so many times I am inclined to blaze through it. 
I believe this is a perception check, which we succeeded because we have good perception. We had a 50-50 shot at making it. Plus eight experience. Getting us closer to a level up we don't need. Kana continues investigating our creepy neighbor. Got ourselves a pet eel. Certainly won't regret that at any point. Uh, this is a dex check. So, as much as I'm loath to do it, let us call the police. 3% doom. Already taken a lot of doom damage. Might have to go to uh, the monument. Losing all of our checks, despite our excellent stats. Story of my life. And this guy, he can bring our doom down at the cost of a lot of reason. We gotta do it. We are gonna need quite a bit of reason in order to save Kana later on, though. So I can't do too much more damage to myself there. The burnt notes literally do nothing. About to lose more reason. And more stamina. But there we go, I completed the side quest. You may be going crazy, but you can swear something is watching you from the sea. I don't think that it is. I guess maybe some outer god is controlling these evil eels. Evolving eels, more accurately. Uh, let's see, I'm actually going to rest, despite the doom cost involved. Because like I said, need that reason. Can't risk losing much more. Just head to school. And take a horrified peek at something. So, I did recently learn that the ending C option is uh, unlocked by hitting escape here. I've never done that, because who would abandon Kana like that? It's agonizing enough to have to not poke her eye ball out and uh, cause her to die. We are going to be a good friend. Do what any friend would do <laughs> in a time such as this. Gouge an eyeball out, but I'm going to censor it. No one needs to see that. We've seen it enough. I did notice over here, the pin ends up stabbed into her face somehow. I don't. I never figured out why that's why that happens. Just more injury to poor Kana. But she's in good spirits about it. Rejoins our party. Gives us permanent damage reduction. Luckily, we bought everything we need, because we wouldn't be able to afford it anymore. Just in time. Now, we drink our milk. We take a bath, fill it with water, and recover our reason, because our reason got really messed up there. But we've got Kana, we've got fuel for some reason. Hmm. Something to ponder. And we've got uh, everything we need to hopefully get this achievement that I need. As we enter the peculiar painting. Mamiya Ichiro has invited us to his mysterious mansion. He's working on a true masterpiece. How could we decline? And here we are. At his fancy place. Only one option to begin with. Plus one curse. Oh, that's a bad one. A really, really bad one. And we can't get rid of it by any normal means. So we're just sort of stuck with this. Hopefully we don't get contaminated water, so that we can at least counteract the holes at the end of each mystery. If that happens, we're done for. Carry through as normal, attempt to climb this big rock, fail the strength check. But on the bright side we do meet, I me. Ichiro-san's, uh, archivist, I believe. 
entranced by weird rocks at the edge of the woods. Can look into the studio. I don't see much in there. We'll have to find a way to turn the lights on, but I mean, we have a light source. Can't really f shine it through the uh, keyhole while we're looking through the keyhole, though. So that has to remain a mystery for now. Stick with Ivy. Moriko is inclined to uh, stick with the friendly lady. If we destroy the shine, we can get some money. If we pray, we can get some experience. Sure. I always hope that restores reason, and it never does. There's also an ending C to this mystery that I've never gotten before. But I don't know how to get it. Uh, we're lost in the mansion. Doesn't make any sense. And we're starting to panic. And we failed our luck check. Even more stamina down. Okay. So now... We have unlocked the work shed. We've been in here before. Last time, it was too dark. We had to grab a flashlight and just leave. But if we bring a flashlight of our own... We find a chainsaw! Using your flashlight, you manage to get a better look inside. In the corner, you find something really promising. I've been looking forward to finding this chainsaw since this update came out. Because the achievements list spoils that there is a chainsaw. And this chainsaw is part of the achievement that I'm going for here. Kind of figured it would be in the work shed. Just makes sense, really. So... Let's use our fuel. We now have a functional chainsaw. Two-handed strength weapon. Very, very fast. Five damage. Brutal indeed. All you need to say is all caps CHAINSAW. Could not agree more, World of Horror. Excellent, but we still don't have our achievements. We probably will soon. But we just gotta keep at it for now. Uh, let's search the room. Get an energy drink. Oh, hi, mommy san Ichiro-san will use his last name. Oh, by the way, you refuel the chainsaw, making it usable again. Groovy. Just a little hint at what the achievement is going to be. Plus one dex until the end of mystery. I don't think I need that, but it's not worth any money. So I'll probably just drink it at the beginning of the next mystery. Uh, every invisible surface covered in obscene paintings and grotesque monster faces. In the middle is Ichiro-san, stabbing Aimee and splattering her blood over an empty canvas. I accidentally picked the option that advances the mystery rather than the one that sticks by Aimee's side. My bad, I did mean to rescue Aimee, but instead she got murdered. I got a little distracted by my chainsaw. Who could blame me? We'll have to avenge her by taking out this eyeless nightmare man with our chainsaw. And we do only have a 50% chance to hit, but a damage per hit. Probably gonna want to brace, because he deals three damage. It'd be nice if we could guarantee our hit. We could only get it as high as 80% chance to hit, which is pretty damn good. We could go for a guaranteed six damage. We will, for starters, throw this at him. I don't think we'll be needing this anymore. Pretty good start. Yeah, I like these odds. We'll save this. Fire this off a few times. Just take one damage. I think that was one damage. And it's really, really fast. We could potentially do a lot of damage in a single turn with this thing. 
Okay, it does two damage here. Even with uh, Kana preventing some of it. So we ought to murder him this turn, don't you think? That'll do it. Okay. New achievement unlocked. Hail to the king, baby. King Moriko. That is the name of the achievement. Because Moriko is supposed to start with a shotgun. And then you get the chainsaw and you murder somebody with it. Then you get hail to the king, baby. And we burn down Ichiro's mansion. Recovering some of our stats. Losing even more to the ever-growing holes. Uh, what do we got? Nothing's gonna bring our strength up, unfortunately. So really, just might as well use luck and pump everything into strength. Come on, not contaminated water. Excellent. And because we checked the lighthouse earlier, I know one of the town status effects we're gonna get is just the thing that makes the the uh, lighthouse have an extra floor as we're going through it. So I'm happy with this run. If we can keep our health up, we'll probably win, because we've got a chainsaw. Who's gonna stop us? Nobody. Uh, we'll stick with reason. Even though stamina is permanently draining out of us because of the holes. Which, uh, a lot of people seem to have trypophobia, I think it's called. Fear of, like, little holes. I don't get it myself, but that's one of the things that really seems to terrify people. All your internet copy pastas. That's a very notorious one. But anyway, uh, I don't, didn't even really look at what the other options are here. They probably don't matter too much. Household Hell's a nice easy one. Might be able to recover some stats. These are all pretty easy. The last boss in the blood-curdling botanist can be very difficult. Uh, this... I don't even think I need to read this one. This is just the Blair Witch Project. We've all seen it. Ooh, what? Where do I have that's maxed out threat? I gotta not go to the mansion. The mansion's a nightmare since we burned it down. We'll take this energy drink. Why not? We'll even read our inspiring novel. Eh, maybe we'll save it. Yeah, we'll save it. Change of heart there. Nothing else we can do right now. And, oh. They want us to investigate the mansion. So we won't be doing this side quest, I guess. It's just too difficult with uh, the way things are going. So we could get a bonus mask. Let's get a bonus mask. The ritual mask. Yeah, that could be good. Ignore reason cost. It saved my ass in one of the previous playthroughs. Maybe it'll do so again. As much as uh, I would have liked to use the chainsaw on an enemy, which is what would have happened if we picked the other option. Maybe I should buy something for slot C, but I only have one dollar. Everything costs at least two dollars now. Because of the town status effects. Um... I never really know what to do here. We probably don't want spells, though. Uh, we called the cops before. We got some money out of it. Uh, the nearest Koban. You tell the officer about the gruesome discovery. The old policeman is grateful and gives you a small reward before disappearing inside to make a call. Okay. Got a few bucks out of the deal. So now we can theoretically buy something, if we want to. Haven't yet decided what I might want, though. Pretty content with our current loadout because it includes a chainsaw. 3% doom, that's not great. And we're already into the forest. Blew all my chances to do anything. Raised our threat level immediately. So now we're gonna take extra penalties. All 
Right. 24 damage. What's the best way to deal 24 damage? Three of these, I think? Yeah. We'll uh, pump each one up so they each have an 85% chance to hit. And just in case, we'll save that uh, loadout. But it should kill him in one turn. As you can imagine, having a chainsaw rules. Four percent more doom, yeesh. How did I end up in an alleyway here in the forest? Anyway, you find a pile of human teeth lying on a nearby rock. Blair Witch Project, like I said. Uh, this guy always gets away from me, and I think it's a dex check. I forget what hide in the crowd is. Let's confront him. Perception check. I had a pretty good chance, but... Yeah, didn't work out. These are all effectively random. You gotta help the dog, though. Bad luck. Dog got freed anyway, but... We got caught in the trap ourselves. Destroying our stamina. If I'd gotten that money before... We got stuck in the forest. I might have bought something that would have gotten us an alternate ending. But too late. Um, we'll search the tent. More money. I have a hell of a lot of money now. Got another curse? Oh god. We're gonna find out if holes stacks. We might take four stamina damage at the end of this mystery. Charisma check to reveal ourselves. Dexterity check to run away. This is a minor injury, so we can get it healed for free. It literally does nothing, but we can get it healed for free. Uh, that's a charisma check. That's a strength check. Just run away. Scared but safe. Tiny Cuts, more than anything else, just has a horrifying image. More annoying than anything. We might end up revealing every single square here in the forest. Okay, we did not. I'm pretty sure that's a penalty for peeking inside, so let's just take the cassettes and run. And holes only did two stamina damage. They do not stack. So this is survivable. Our extra curse did literally nothing. Good thing, too. I could not have survived two of those. So we can have an ammo stash, more bullets. We already have two bullets that we can never use. Because even if we pick up a different gun, we just have to immediately throw it away. We respect our father too much. Because we are a daddy's girl. That is excellent. This will uh, cancel out the holes. Glorious. I like that Moriko is the only character who has a explicit familiar relationship. Which is very important to her. I mean, I guess Yashiro has a sister, but she's dead. That's part of his story. Otherwise, everyone's just on their own. If only our father knew the tribulations we were going through, he might uh, lift his ban on using guns this week. Despite this being important technology, I'm pretty sure they still have not implemented what you do with the forest tapes. So they will remain broken and useless until a future update. I always check the cabinet even though after the first level, or after the uh, beginning, after you check it once it can never contain anything. Uh, fill our bottle back up. Uh, our reason is actually good enough. I'm gonna use this for stamina. Um, yeah, I think we're good to go. We will go right for the blood-curdling botanist. Shiro-san has gone missing, uh, and his wife wants us to figure out what happened. It's connected to the new fertilizer he ordered from Tokyo. Where is he, and why would he need so much fertilizer? Let's find out. You've got a business card of a gardening company where the missing man was working. Maybe some of his colleagues could tell you anything useful. Maybe. Uh, we do want to investigate the school a couple times to meet the mycology maniac. 
they might have more information for us. I think we're gonna end up in the forest a few times, which is bad news, because the forest is very, very dangerous. We have so much money that I'm going to try and buy a map, maybe? We'll see what they have. Hopefully a map or, if not, a compass. So far, neither. Hmm. And my plan is backfiring. One more. Okay, we got a compass. The lesser option, but better than nothing at this point. Since we have some money left over, we'll see what the this outer god, the outer entity, wants in order to combat the outer god. He wants some money, of course. He usually does. Uh, I'm gonna risk it. Go again. More money. That only took off, like, uh, six doom, I think. Not a ton. Might be enough. Um, yeah, we'll just begin our investigation with good old reliable Kana. Okay, Obsessed Man, you have no chance, my friend. None at all. I'm gonna read this. It's too late for it to uh, affect this encounter, I believe. But that doesn't matter. Because we are guaranteed to kill him in one turn. Chainsaw, too good. And for the rest of this mystery, it should deal 10 damage per hit. That is a lot of damage. Yeah, I figured this guy would show up sooner or later. We'll sell our reason again. Yeah, we'll do the uh, school part now. Might end up being a waste, but we deal a lot of damage. So, probably not. Probably gonna be just fine. No, we'll only use two. We'll give her a 5% chance of survival here. Hmm. Yeah, even though I uh, have enough energy to swing again, I have used up too many of my actions. Apparently the cap is, what, uh, eight? That's a bizarre cap. Good enough. Occult Diary, that'll bring down some doom. Excellent. Just what I needed. Oh, we do gotta explore again, though. Oh, the school nurse. We'll show her off. The nurse treats tiny cuts. Uh, younger students are afraid of her. Why? Sorry, dear. A patient is here. I'll call you back, says the nurse as she's eyeing you up. How can I help you today? And then she instantly heals all of our minor injuries for free. So she's actually one of the nicest and best, most trustworthy characters in the entire game. The younger students are cruel to have any problem with her. Because the school nurse is great. A personal friend of mine. I do kind of want to go steal the painkillers from the doctor's office. But we'll hold off. Can't risk the doom right now. Although we are four mysteries in. 50% doom. Pretty good, all things considered. And now we're stuck in the forest. Damn. Missed our chance to get the mycology maniac. So that limits the sort of endings we can get here. Let's see, how do we deal 18 damage most efficiently? Oh, this is uh, 8 damage each, so... That's already a 93% chance to hit. Chainsaw is too good. Here's 24 guaranteed damage. Just like that. So hopefully I get into more combat. However, I am a fool. 
You know, I forgot to write down what my second enemy encounter was. Ah, well. I'm gonna pay for it later on. In Doom. Uh, if we get lost in thought, I think we'll fall into a trap here. Let's get a grip, for minus one reason. Yeah, that's related to the symbols on the door of the lighthouse. Oh, I'm dying from reason loss here. Oh well. Hopefully we don't get any more reason loss. Okay, this will restore a bunch of reason for us. If we lift the heaviest box, it will cost one stamina, gain three reason. If we don't overwork ourselves, it will cost some doom and gain three reason. Only 2% doom, though. That's worth it at this specific moment. Maybe I will just randomly luck into the 1 in 4 chance to remember what the second enemy I fought in this run was. Uh... You stand in the middle of the room when suddenly the floor gives up and you fall down to the basement. Falling through the hole in the floor, you find yourself in an overgrown basement. In the corner lies a man you recognize. It's Shirosan, the missing gardener. You must help him escape this cursed place. And then they give us a little minigame. So Shirosan here is who we're protecting. We need to protect him with our own body which will deal four damage to either stamina or reason. Or we can lead him out. We need to lead him out a whole bunch of times in a row. If we lead him out, he will take the four damage, and he has 12 HP. Given the uh, health I'm coming in here with, I'm going to have to let him take the full brunt of it. Sorry, Shiro. down to six. He's only taking three at a time, which is normal. We are taking bonus damage because of the uh, Outer God effect. So if we had completed the side quest, we would have the option to uh, fight a boss here instead, which is what I wanted to do because I have a chainsaw. But he died anyway and gave us his experience as though he had completed a boss fight. Then a whole bunch of stats change. We lose two to holes, gain two from being daddy's girl. Plus one, plus one. Net gain. So that is the worst ending, but also a very easy ending. Vines whip you, covering your exposed skin in deep lacerations. You cry in pain, dropping the body of Shiro-san. There's no way you'll be able to save him. With heavy heart, you run, leaving the man you were supposed to protect behind. He's good and dead. Poor guy. Okay. We won't be casting spells because we don't have any spells. So that town effect does nothing. Plus one dex, plus one charisma, plus one perception. All useless to us. We could try and get some of our stats above eight. There is a good reason to do that related to the symbols on the, uh, the door of the lighthouse. We're definitely not going to get dex above 8. We could get perception above 8. I don't know if it would be useful to us to do that. Our strength is probably good enough, though. Because we're on hard mode, we only recover 3 stamina or reason if we go that route. So choosing a stat boost is even more efficient. Might as well keep up with strength. It probably won't matter, because we're near the end of this playthrough. For good or for ill, luck has been on our side, so it's looking pretty good. Not happy about this layout, but I'll take it. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. Really tempted to bump perception up to eight. Uh, so, drink our celebratory water. 
refill it. And then uh, our stats are all tied up, so we'll go with stamina. Without that reason, we'll go with reason. Reason is the harder one to uh, recover under normal circumstances. So, one last time. Into the household hell. We've gotten all the endings before. It's the Ooh Manor. Another mysterious mansion on the outskirts of town. There was a family of four, disappeared without a trace. If we were invested, we could try and solve that mystery. We would probably want to get another cohort because I don't want to sacrifice Kana. She's a uh, best friend. Our roomie <laughs> lives right next door. We hang out with her all the time. Okay, since it doesn't look like we're going to get any character-specific events, I'm just going to spoil that uh, Moriko is canonically a lesbian. This was originally suggested by the fact that there's an enemy called the Young Witch, and um, when she attacked you, she would deal additional reason damage to male characters specifically to signify that she was using her seductive powers to warp their mind. But, uh... Moriko is also subject to that effect. And, uh... So it was in that way implied that she was uh, attracted to women. And then with the latest expansion, her uh, character-specific events do reveal that she is a lesbian. 100% confirmed. It's buried very, very deep in the game, but there is, you know, non-subtle um, LGBT representation in this game, which I do appreciate. Let's buy a round for five experience. Another reason Morco is an excellent character. Well worth unlocking. And I mean, chainsaw. She's custom made to collect and use the chainsaw. Come on. Um, what do we get if we complete the side quest? We get the information on how to summon the weird sea god to perform the sacrifice. It could ruin our run, but it could also be a good time. Let's go the safer route for now. Ugh, this guy again. Take my blood. And we're already stuck in the mansion. So uh, hopefully I don't need that blood. Because I certainly don't need the funds. Here comes another chainsaw victim. A big one. Who deals a lot of damage. But we just need to deal... Yeah. Three chainsaw hits and we're good to go. 100% chance to hit. I like those odds. Yeah. Take that. You have been fed. Unfortunately, we are not Seymour. Um... We got a sewing kit! And a jump scare! It's win-win. We didn't even lose anything from the jump scare. So the sewing kit will cost us charisma. But, we need that stamina. So my gaping wounds back together. Okay. So we have a mask. Let's just, uh... Attack the mannequin. In theory, this should be terrifying. In practice, we just need to hit it... Uh, several times this time. We do have a 105% chance to hit, though! So I think we are guaranteed to win. Yes, indeed. A few more rooms in the mansion. Hopefully we'll get in some more fights. We found a book. If we take the book, it will give us an injury of some kind. Usually a major injury. I think burning it reduces doom? Yes. Perfect. Guess we had a little extra fuel with us. Dumped it on the book. Uh, 
Need to chase someone. Got more doom out of the deal. At least we didn't lose any health. Our threat level was already maxed out. So luckily this goes to waste, but... Yeah, this place is very threatening at the moment. Minus two stamina, which I think... That no, was just minus two. Even though our threat level is maxed out. Weird. Normally that should have been an, uh, an additional loss. Uh, let's see. Deft handling makes our guns better. So our knowledge. Let's max out our knowledge. I am at this point certain we will not need any more strength. Hopefully that is not lethal hubris, but... I have uh, survived a much more dangerous playthroughs of this game. You aren't sure what to expect? The sturdy door to the study opens with a creak. The dark, dusty room is empty, but something feels wrong. A faint draft, perhaps. You move the rotten carpet aside to reveal a secret passageway out directly into the cliff rock. Now, if we explore some more, we don't have any light sources, so we don't know what these boxes are. And we didn't complete the side quest, so we wouldn't know what to do with those boxes anyway. Step closer. Unholy chance coming from the caves. Connected with the mansion must have driven the family insane. So we assume they became cannibals. We are incorrect. But it is a scary thought anyway. And the last town status is a freaky flood. So, hmm. There it is. Heart of Darkness was one of them. I knew because we had six symbols by the door, we were guaranteed to get Heart of Darkness. Because normally there are five floors to the lighthouse. But we got a bonus punishment floor. Okay. We got a lot of stats to deal with. And yeah, we'll even everything out. A lot of doom to deal with. Uh, this playthrough went exceedingly well. I've actually attempted this challenge a bunch of times. I don't even know how many. Didn't even get close, but uh, this time, Chainsaw. Just cut through all danger. Never stood a chance. This is a beautiful vista. I'm glad I chose this palette. And now we enter the lighthouse. So, these six symbols. Each one represents the floors we will face in the order we will face them inside the lighthouse. So these are all established at the beginning of your playthrough. And if you know what these symbols mean, you will know what challenges await you inside the lighthouse. And you can set your stats accordingly. Now I don't know what these mean, unfortunately. So I'm hoping I have at least picked some of them correctly. This one, I know for a fact, is what was the second enemy you fought. I know the first one was Ichiro-san, because we killed him with a chainsaw. Unless he was the second one, and we killed something with the flashlight beforehand. I don't think that was the case, though. But that means we didn't face an enemy until the third mystery. I don't remember what it could have been. It might have been Tatoro, or whatever that thing is called. Anyway, into the lighthouse. I click the wrong button. We have a bit of doom to spend, but I do expect to take five more doom damage on that higher floor. So hopefully we don't lose too much to doom damage. Plenty of HP. Kana by our side, even though he will only get him to one fight. Obviously, I remember the second mystery, because I planned the whole run around the first two mysteries. It was the peculiar painting. Oh, and uh, here's the symbol. So this corresponds to the one that was by the door. If we knew what it meant, we would have been able to prepare our dexterity, I think? Uh... Yeah, we need to reach through... This hole of broken glass. And knives, of course. It is indeed a dex check. So these 
Obviously, there's no roll associated with them. You just have enough decks or you don't. The cutoff is eight for all of these stat checks. So if you can get a stat to eight or higher, you will surpass this check here in the lighthouse. Just another bit of game knowledge that will help you succeed if you're uh, still having a close call near the end of your mysteries. So if we had a light source, we'd be able to get past the VR thing here because there's a thick black cloud obscuring our vision. Something is waiting inside, but we gotta brave it. There were, however, blasphemous whispers that we heard within that mysterious veil. Uh, here we have the Trail of Blood Acid. Another metal gate blocks our way, this time with an upside down triangle and an X and an O. I believe this might be the knowledge check? I hope so. Or the strength check, let's see. Because we gotta complete a circuit that is covered with acid. It is a strength check, very good. We would have passed this regardless. The weird goo burns your fingers, but you quickly manage to separate the faulty plug and connect the proper cable. With a buzz, the gate opens. We know the second enemy question will be the one that uh, is the penultimate floor. Here's the Polaroid with the X, which is indicated down by the door. It might have been the Obsessed Man, I'm pretty sure it was Tataro. Now that I'm thinking about it, it was probably the set. It, it could be any of these, except Ichiro-san. Which I said in a previous playthrough, and it did end up being the one that I said was definitely not the one. So... I think it was the Obsessed Man. I'm gonna go for it. Wrong answer. Every single time. I was... I swore to myself I was gonna check. See it was there. Write it down. Totally forgot. It won't ruin this run, though, because we came out so far ahead. Here's the symbol for this one. Okay, I think this is the knowledge check, so we might have some payoff for having selected the extra knowledge point. Uh, another metal gate. Tiny page nailed to the gate explains that opening the gate will require you to grab two metal rods. Using your own body as a natural conductor, you'll power up the gate. Do you want to play a game? Yeah, this is very Jigsaw-ish. And we do want to play a game. We want to complete a game, so we're going to have to grab those metal rods. But we're too smart. We notice that there are dials and buttons. We toy with them and break down the voltage. Then safely complete the circuit. Onto the top floor. We made it. We have defeated Itho 2. Dark clouds swirl around the lighthouse. Did you arrive too late? I don't think we did. New achievement unlocked. As the unnatural fog slowly lifts, you are relieved and collapse on the floor. And we did pretty well. We've uh, permanently got a lot of holes growing in our body until we die. But... Our excellent relationship with our father will keep that from killing us. Indefinitely, it seems. We also hunger for human flesh, and if we ever cast a spell, we might bring a Thotu back. But we do not know any spells, and we hopefully will never learn. The next day, everything feels like a bad dream. We stop the Outer God. The ritual has been brought to an end. We're safe for now. And in under an hour. Yeah, this game is weird. Either you steamroll it, or you die really, really quickly, as we saw with Yashiro. But this was an excellent playthrough. Very, very fun. I love the chainsaw. Now that I know how to get it, I'm going to be tempted to get it every single playthrough. Also, the chainsaw achievement unlocked a new outer god. 
So who knows? I may or may not come back to play more of this game sometime soon. In the meantime, if Japanese body horror with Lovecraftian undertones is your thing, like it clearly is mine, you will almost certainly enjoy my ongoing playthrough of Siren Blood Curse. Please check that out if you haven't yet, and thank you very much for watching.